Hi, I'm Dave Robinson, and welcome to another one of my screencasts where I'll be using R to analyze a dataset I've never seen before. As usual, the dataset comes from the Tidy Tuesday Project, which is a weekly project in R from the R for Data Science online learning community. So let's see what dataset they have for us this week. All right, it looks like it's on Tennis Grand Slam, Slam Champions. So I should warn you that I know almost nothing about tennis. Uh, so, um, oh, we have multiple data sets. I think it's going to be um, court surface. All right, uh huh. Spoiler hint. Some data cleaning. Just reading th quickly through the description um, of the data set. All right. Player date of birth, Grand Slams, Grand Slam ti uh, timeline. All right, looks like those are the three data sets that I'm uh, interested in working with. All right, what's this? Okay, I'm gonna grab, yeah, I'm gonna grab these three. I'm gonna create a new um, R markdown. Usually I load up Tidyverse first. Go and player date, oh, player date of birth. And uh, let me see. Ah, usefully everything everything seemed pretty clean, except this is well. This age is in days, not years. That's something worth noting. Uh, Grand Slam. So this is only 105 players. Are these winners? Are they? Um, are right, these are people that have won um, a major title win? Grand Slam. What is a grand slam? Does this t does this tell me like it means something completely different in baseball? It's there are four grand slam tournaments. Okay, I'm just reading through this. Like I said, I'm really not familiar with um with tennis. It's the U.S. the U.S. Open. Okay, right, the U.S. Open. I know that one. That's in Queens, in New York, uh, and Wimbledon, and French Open, Australian Open. Okay. Uh huh. All right. Estimated the day of each. Okay. So that. Oh. This, oh. I see. So we can do some analysis of the approximate age of each of the, the player at each tournament. All right. So let's start. Uh, I've looked at player date of birth. Let's look at the set of grand slams. There should be four per year, uh, if I understood that data correctly. I'm seeing eight. Did each of them have multiple winners? Um. Or are there there are two of them? Oh, are there they're held twice a year? Is is I'm again I'm still catching up. August, um, January, late May through early June. It's played in a two week period. Okay, so if I said filter year is 1968, why would I have? I want to understand the data first. What I'm seeing is two Wimbledon winners. Uh, oh, oh, female and male. Okay, so each tournament, at least in this period of time, had a female and a male winner. Let's see if that continues to be the, tr the case. Well, this year, I guess, I guess in 2019, there's only been one so far. But generally, yeah, it looks like we have, um, uh, what is it? It's uh, gender... Um, four female, four male, uh, male, male winners each year. One for each in a um, in a tournament. All right, there it is. It's it's um. Like I said, this is one of those uh, men's and women's finals. Okay, yeah. Like I said, I had to understand a bit about the data. It looks like each year from nineteen, um, not every not every year. Let's look at this. Uh, usually four from each, four from each, four from each. Why do I see... What is up with 1977? Eight from each. Okay, uh, one straight, one year uh, that looked a little odd. Uh, let me take a quick look at that year. Some of this data looks, most of this data looks duplicated. Double, double, double. Uh, arrange by name. 
Not all of it is exactly duplicated. Two people are individual, but it looks like we have the same winner twice. Oh, okay, so this looks to me like a bug. Should we fix it? I'm worried if we fix it, we're going to mess with the rolling wind count. It looks like, um, yeah, I feel like we should still fix it. Okay, the way that I would, um, that I would fix it is that I'd um, do arrange by year and grand slam, oh, grand slam and uh, name and I'll do, on gender, why not? And I'll do distinct name, oh, and, oh, not distinct name, distinct year, grand slam, and name dot keep all equals true. So we run this, and then I run that same line. Uh, we still have people like Guillermo who won the French Open, then the US Open, but I've removed those other uh, cases. We still have a little too much data here. Uh, I can't say as to why. It looks as like a data issue. It probably won't affect our conclusions too much, but it's something that I would um, that I'd note. Okay, so I'm just quickly noting, removing some players in 1977 who were duplicated. All right, I feel like I should fix the rolling wind count column too. Maybe I won't do that quite yet. All right, so this is just winners. All right, so that means I can't say predict who will win because, um, hmm. I can't predict who will win because I don't have the players that they were playing. I don't have like everyone who went into a tournament. Uh, but I can ask questions about Let's see. All right, let's start by asking about age of, um, oh, I didn't even look at my third data set. Grand Slam timeline. Player, year, oh, ho, oh, this is perhaps, <clears throat> perhaps everyone who played. Uh, so let's find out. Year, tournament, throw in a gender. Hmm. Arrange year, view. All right, so we have, yeah, for each of them, we have something like, okay, so here in US Open 2018, we have 31 um, uh, female and uh, 16 male competitors uh, in the 2018 US Open. I get, all right, now let's quickly, oh, let, let's look at that and see what the outcomes look like. I'm not sure how much prediction I can do. I don't have too much data on, on people. I don't even think I have the ages of these players. I don't have their rankings. But it's interesting to, to see nonetheless. Filter year is 2018. Count outcome. Most people get eliminated in the first round or are... Well, I'm looking at um, t uh, all of 2018, but let's look just at U.S. Open. U.S. Open. Tournament is U.S. Open. Most people were out in the second round, some in the third round. And two people won. Uh, presumably one male uh, competitor and one female. And uh, I don't know what I'm going to do with... I could think of a few things to do. I could say how many people have played in before predicting their result. Their result. Uh, okay, I'm going to come back to Grand Slam timeline. I'm going to start with exploration of the winners. Simplest question I can start with is, uh, right now we have this data with one row for every player for every um, in every year. I can simply ask who are the most frequent winners um, in 1968 to present. No surprise. Serena Williams, uh, might have generally agreed to be the best um, tennis player in history. And uh, if I look just at the last 16, I can make a graph. This is not going to be... Uh, we've made this kind of graph a lot. It's... Uh, I'm going to need to do a quick reorder. Mutate name equals FCT reorder name N. All right. Even I know some of these names. Um, all right, and uh, X is, I usually don't leave this because I usually say number of Grand Slam tournaments won. And I could, I could really say uh, competitors, um, tennis players with the most 
Grand Slam Tournaments 20, what did I say, I'd say, oh, 1968 to present. Tournament wins. I could also say subtitle is this. Uh, okay, and uh, no, it's actually it's a, already a, it's a solid move to to move to make me um, a couple minutes ago I knew nothing about tennis. Now I realize oh I know I know a little bit. I didn't recognize like I said a few of these names. Um, I'm gonna change the theme really fast. Theme set theme light. Okay, and. Uh, and how else could I uh, edit this? Oh, well, let's think about what aesthetics we can use for something like this. Notice that um, that here it's like uh, Serena Williams has won 26 Grand Slam tournaments. How can we break that down? Well, one thing we could do is break it down by tournament. Uh, so say by which which tournament was it? Oh, the it would be Grand Slam. And say Phil equals the Grand Slam. So there we are. Now we. Oh, um, I'm gonna need to fix my reordering a little bit. What did I do? Oh, I did. Um, this head 16 is is the problem. Uh, this is this is a challenge. Is now I have to find only the top 16. Um, I have to find the 16 players with the most wins. Usually, what I do. Uh, and now that we've broken it down into smaller group, it's not the, quite as easy. Uh, for a second, how I go about this. Well, what I'd probably do is do an add count. This is a little silly. Uh, why is it silly? Because I add a column called NN. That's each person's total. So this, uh, so Chris Everett won seven French, French Opens, but 42 total. This feels, oh, I add count of N. Oops. I meant to add a count of name weight by N. All right, so Rafael Nadal won 17 total. Um, and uh, Chris Everett won seven French Opens, but 18 tournaments total. Uh, and now I could, I could say, after that, I throw in a filter, and then it's greater than or equal to five. Now I uh, still have the ones that are the most, uh, five, eight, not sure. And uh, the, la the other thing is in FCT reorder, I need to say by sum. Because I need to say, what I'm really interested in is the totals. Ah, there's a pretty interesting uh, way of, of um, visualizing it. Eight? Let's try seven. Let's see what adding a few more rows does. Nah, I liked eight. You know why I liked eight? Because there are a lot of, of ties at seven. So I get the sense it kind of flattens out. All right. I could go. I, I could go either way, but yeah, there's there's a good amount of information here already. Okay, uh, I'm gonna clean this up a little. I do like this graph, so I'm going to tidy it up a little bit. I'm gonna say Grand Slam is. Here's a trick I sometimes use. I use string to title of string replace Grand. I need to replace the underscores with spaces. I don't like how that looks. I want Australian Open, French Open, U.S. Open, Wimbledon. Outside of U.S. being spelled us. Uh, this is, is uh, pretty effective, and I can say Phil is Grand Slam. All right, so that's my exploratory data analysis just from the winner data. Uh, what I'm looking at is um, is uh, who's won the most um, uh, tournaments. So we can see some things like Rafael Nadal has won mostly French Opens. Um, let's see. Uh, Monica Seles has won... Um, Lots of Australian Opens, some French Opens, but only a handful of uh, some some U.S. Opens, but never but never Wimbledon. Um, Ivan Lindell has never won Wimbledon. We can um, we can generally uh, read through this. Serena Williams has won many tournaments, but the fewest are French Opens. That um, is particularly meaningful. All right, and this yeah this gives us a um this exploration of some of the best tennis players. All right, all right. So that that's a uh, that's a start. Oh, I haven't saved yet, so this is called Grand Slams. All right, I've got, um, I've got the win. I've still got the winner data. Now I can ask a question about. Uh, I, have, I haven't asked a question about um, changes over time yet. No, I'm. I'm actually going to start by looking at age. Okay, so I've got this, and I've got date of birth. Um, Dob, player Dob, player Dob. 
And uh, if I take player DOB and I join it with Grand Slams, I need to remove, I need to select just the name and the date of birth. I think I, I yeah, this already had some data combination, but I think I want to create it myself. I just want dates of birth. And then I can join it by Grand Slam by name. So now I have every player's date of birth um, alongside their, their win. Now I can say mutate. Um, how would I do age? I would usually do as numeric um, diff time of uh, tournament date and date of birth. Unit equals year. Oh, doesn't let me say unit equals years. Well, I'll do unit equals days and I'll divide by 365. 0.25 really, but... Uh, Who's counting? 0.25 is because every four years a leap year. It's going to be very close. Um, oh, and let me save that as age. All right. So now we have um, we have each player's age at the year that they won. Uh, all right. So I'm going to I'm going to save this as Grand Slams age. And I'm going to ask some questions about age. One is, what's the distribution of the player who wins a grand of uh, the players who win a Grand Slam? Whenever I want a distribution. I'm looking at a histogram. All right, not quite normal. In fact, it looks a little bit bimodal. I'm gonna. I have some theories as to what, as to what this peak is, but generally the median. Let's see, the median. Uh, I actually would usually put this in the text here. The median age of a Grand Slam winner, 1968, present, is. I put the median age. About 25, and um, the average is. I don't know if I report both the, the uh, mean and the average, but sometimes it doesn't hurt to have that. Same thing. Honestly, then I'm probably just going to say the, the the median. It's not that far from uh, normal distribution. So about 20. So we're talking about about 25. Um, I notice they can range as low as. Is that 18? 16? Wow. Oh, I did not know uh, you could play it in, uh, in a uh, major tennis tournament at the age of 16. So you, we can range from 16 um, to all the way up to coming up on 40, but um, mostly looks like 25. Okay. Now I can ask, does that differ? Does it differ between men and women? Male and female competitors. Start with Phil. Let me see. Hmm. I'm going to start with Phil equals gender and uh, position, e oops. position equals identity, alpha equals 0.5. So these are over um, 0.75. These are overlapping histograms. That's one way to, um, to visualize this. All right. What this suggests to me at first glance is that there is sort of a bimodal distribution in the age of women, uh, of female winners, it's not uh, across female players. If, if, a, if a woman uh, plays multiple times, so Serena, uh, Serena Williams is in this data set 26 times, for example, because this is distribution of, world, of um, Grand Slam winners. Uh, men are more centered around 25, but men also have, generally the oldest winners um, in, in this time period have been men. Okay, has it been changing over time? That's really what I'm interested in. Uh, there are kind of two ways that I could visualize this. I'm going to start with a box plot. This is the more detailed way of vis visualizing it. Uh, I'm going to say box plot. Age is now on the y-axis, and uh, I'm going to put decade on the on the um, x-axis. So I'll say decade is. Um, we've done this before. We say remind myself. Oh yeah, ten times. Year of, what is it, tournament date? I can't do this until I've done library Louvre date. Year of tournament date. Mod, not, this is not mod, this is truncated division. 10. So I add a, a, a decade column, and I say decade, age, fill is gender. I always need to say group is, oh, actually, Check this out. I'm going to show this this bug. I uh, just to, 
um, so the problem is we don't have de we don't have um, uh, it doesn't like a continuous. Oh, what am I doing? This ten times this mod that does not look to me like a decade. I'm going to, oh, oops, I meant to put a slash there. Okay, the problem is that uh, it doesn't know how to group them by decade. I actually need to say group equals, check this out, interaction of gender and decade. So that, uh, that, that tells it how to um, split up by box plots. All right, so one thing this suggests, it looks like the distribution might have gotten more similar. Wow, look at this, the, um, the distribution of the age of women has varied a lot. You know, well, it's interesting, I'm going to revisit this, but like, uh, so, so 1960, there's not a lot of data. I wouldn't pay too much attention to it. Uh, but, in, um, but in 1980, the average woman was, um, was older. Uh, the, the average female winner of, the, of a Grand Slam was older than the average male. Um, that shifted back, and now it's evened out. When was Serena Williams born? Hmm. Nineteen eighty. These are the nineties. All right. When did she start winning? Ninety nine. So in the two thousands and um, in the two thousands and twenty tens, a large number of the wins, and not a not really a majority or anything, but a large number of wins were Serena Williams as she was getting older. So I can imagine that being one. So by definition, uh, Serena's age was increasing um, during this time. So I just wonder for a second. I wonder, like, uh, the problem with the, double, the thing about double counting and data like this is that uh, one person or a few people can have a disproportionate effect on what looks like trends. I could start by saying um, filter. What if I said name is not Serena Williams? We'll put her back. Yeah, one thing you can actually find is that suddenly it look uh, so Serena Williams won something like. 10 um, with Grand Slams in the last decade, and that drove up uh, during which time she was, let's see, um, during which time she was in her 30s, so that drove up the uh, the median age um, during the 2010s. If we, So let's put it back in, and the median age catches up. So this, sh this um, I'm not really drawing a conclusion in this so much as to show some of the pitfalls of looking at this data with duplication in it. I'm sure there's other people that have effects on, um, on, on this data. It's, it's driven by, it could be driven partly by um, uh, one person's, uh, um, one person who's a pr very prolific winner. Okay, um, still I'm gonna, so I'm gonna say hard to make a conclusion Hard to make a conclusion on the average age of a winner and uh, winner, except uh, I've said that it has definitely, except it looks like it, it it looks like it's increased in the last decade. So this is partly Serena Williams, but it, it's certainly not just her. Um, what if we said don't count someone in a decade twice? So this is a complicated. Uh, concept. What I'm going to say is, we're near the end of a decade, so it's, so so it's um that's lucky because if we we're in the middle of a decade, it would, it would serve as a bit of a confounding factor here. Um, Sixty. This I, I'm just going to filter. Uh, I'm going to say decade greater than or equal to 1970. It's not, I, I, there's not enough data. And there's only a few years in the 60s. Uh, okay. So imagine I said um, I want to look at how has the average age been changing. I might want, instead of um, just adding decade, I might want to group by decade. And I might want to say distinct name. So what I'm doing here is I'm saying I'm actually going to just say decade name, even though it's not actually necessary, uh, but just to be very clear, because it's grouped by. What I'm going to say is don't count the same person. Ooh, I'm doing this wrong. I don't actually want a distinct. I want to group by decade and name. And I want to summarize um, the uh, the average age uh, of someone was when they won in a um, 
in a decade. So Serena Williams won something like 10 times in the 2010s. This is going to count her once with the average age she was for all those wins. So this age is mean of age. Let's throw gender in here too. Okay, so in the 1970s, um, we have Adriano. Actually, why don't I say number of wins? There. So let's say Arthur Ashe won twice and uh, in the 70s and at what an average age of, of 29. Um, Barbara Jordan won once, age of 21.8. Okay, so um, so now we can now I they've summarized. I can visualize decade, age, color is gender. Drop this geom line. I missed that parentheses. I missed. Uh, I have too much grouping somewhere. Oh, after I do this, summarizing the second summarize, which is. Uh, an interesting component of this. This lets me reorder um, decade gender name, which means I can do, two, which will leave this um, group by decade gender. And now one more aggregation to summarize age is mean age, players is n. Doesn't hurt to have to have that knowledge. Okay. And now we can say not uh, avoiding double counting. Um, each player was, so I'm going to actually throw that, sometimes I write the subtitle first because it's something I knew I don't want to forget. I'd say each player was counted only once per decade. I can say title, average age of um, Grand Slam winners over time, average age. And we say um, decade and colors. I think we really need that. I think I just say this. Okay. Uh, all right. So what we, we this probably suggests a trend, especially as I mentioned before. Uh, it doesn't look like there's much of a trend, except that um, Grand Slam winners have are older this decade than before, and this doesn't double count. Um, a couple people, whether uh, Serena Williams or other notable tennis players, is counting everyone only once per decade. All right, so uh, Grant, so I'm going to note this as age over time. Fantastic. We are halfway through, and that's a good time to um. So this was some good uh, exploratory analysis. I wonder how I could bring in the additional um data. I'm going to quickly review. Is there anything here that I should rev that I should look at in the data that I haven't yet? Um, I've looked at the Grand Slam data. Oh, I haven't looked at rolling win count. Hmm. What am I going to do with that? Oh, well, I can start with 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 a question. Um, what I want to say is, hmm. Yeah, I'll. Uh, what I just realized, I might want to know has the the average winner become gotten more more experienced over time. Has the average winner tended to win more frequently in the past? Uh, just because I have that, that data already here, it's um it's going to be useful. Uh, so we're going to call this by decade. By decade and gender is actually what this aggregation is. And I'm going to keep. It's very important in this data that I not count the same person twice. Otherwise, it'll look like the average winner is very experienced. Or is it? I actually need to think through that. Oops. <sighs> rolling win count is mean of rolling win count. Rolling win count, I should have mentioned. Uh, I didn't actually look at the, the dictionary, but it's cumulative win of uh, sum of wins across time and player. Um, so what this means, let me see, rolling win count Here's our data. Which means is how often has the average person won before? All right, it just hit me. This is not going to be very. It's not going to be great data, because it um, of course someone in the 1980s has had more time to uh to win than someone in the 1970s, uh, because there've been more um Grand Slams in our data set. Did the Grand Slams start in 1968? Uh, I ah the Open Era. Okay. Um, so, uh, so it, there was a change in 1968, uh, but the ruling cumulative win is only since the start of 1968. So it's like, of course, there'd be a jump. Yeah, I don't know that I'm that 
interested in this data also it's not clear like it's not clear I do want to look uniquely for example if if every tournament were won by Serena Williams that would be meaningful that most tournaments were won by someone who'd won before so in this ca that case I wouldn't want to aggregate it first I'm gonna drop this uh, this aggregation but it also made me realize it's a bit too complicated a question to ask with aggregation I'd rather look a little deeper into the data I'd rather look at our Grand Slam timeline. All right. Uh, predict, I'm gonna, I'm gonna be, um, what's the word? I'm going to be optimistic. I'm going to be aspirational and say, predicting the winner of a Grand Slam tournament. I don't think I'll be able to, but it's the direction I'm going with, these, um, with this thought is that I wanna go into this Grand Slam timeline data set. I wanna say, year tournament, reminding myself absence not too interesting missing is not too interesting uh, people get eliminated in the first round second round third round fourth round uh, okay so what are we going to look at with this data why do why don't why don't I have the data on the grand here's my grand slams ah, I see I can join this together Okay, so there are three columns I can use to join this table and this table. Um, some of it I have to change. This is really called winner, um, but I don't need that data because I already have the one value here. If I want to combine the data I want in terms of everyone who played in a Grand Slam timeline and a Grand Slam and where they ended up, what I really need is um, it is inner join with Grand Slams select year grand slam and gender and tournament date by by oh oops by um what is it called it's called tournament in this one ah i'm going to do that i'm going to say tournaments is this and I'm going to interjoin with tournaments by really critically year and tournament and gender. Oops. <laughs> do these look different? Do these two data sets? Here's tournaments. Ooh, yes, they do. Isn't that annoying? It's kind of annoying. Uh, that's okay. We deal with, with uh, bigger issues in the data. For example, here, tournament. Yep. Okay. I'm going to need to use my mutate. I actually put this in a graphing step where I said, where did I say it? String to title, etc. I'm going to move that up into the cleaning step. I think... Mutate this, and I also throw in a string replace. Uh, I saw earlier that US, I need to be capitalized. Here we go. Now we have our four. I think those match the, um, the Grand Slam timeline tournaments. Looks to me like they match. Maybe I'm missing something. Uh, and uh, now I can say tournaments joined looks pretty good what I did there what was I doing I needed to pull in the tournament date uh, didn't hurt that I pulled in the the did I pull in the year I did pull in the year too I needed to, I wanted to pull in the tournament date looking at it now it's not oh uh, it's not all that important I could have also I, I basically just used the year huh oh well uh, okay so um but, but I'm going to start with the Grand Slam uh, timeline, and I'm going to ask questions about it. One is, how many uh, tournaments does someone play in before they win? We saw how many someone had won in before they win, but how many? How about how many someone had played in? To do that, I'm going to arrange by, by player and then year to get a feel for... Ooh, that's um, uh, uh, curious. So we see, like, this is a player that has played in... Oh, uh, not year, tournament date. Oh, that's why I needed tournament date. I did want to include, um, I did want to make sure I was sorted, sorted, um, 
Australian, then French Open in January, then French Open in June, and so on. So, yeah, and the U.S. Open in, um, in August or September. Okay, and um, here's September. All right, so uh, we can tell that, uh, Goran, that before Goran um, was a finalist in Wimbledon in 92, he had played in seven, um, seven uh, Grand Slam tournaments. All right, so I'm gonna, what I'm going to do is then group by player and mutate um, rolling play count. One challenge here, I just realized, that this includes players who are absent, uh, which it looks like is actually, what, a majority? Probably not a majority. Uh, oh, maybe. Yes, we have our absence. <sighs> and I also, I don't love NAs, never love NAs. Where is our da NAs in our data? Just because we started moving to this kind of predictive step does not mean we stopped doing our data exploration. I'm gonna say group by year, summarize, mean of um of is an a outcome arranged by year ooh we're missing lots of data more than lots of data we're missing it pretty evenly across time i was really hoping it was just early data we were missing i wonder if it's only particular tournaments uh tournament no it looks like we're missing a good amount of data I'm going to pretend it doesn't exist. <laughs> I'm going. Uh, I'm going to uh, hope that um, the missing data, maybe it's it, it's similar to absent. Uh, the people that actually placed were um, included were were uh, uh, included. Maybe it meant they got eliminated before the first round. I'm not. I'm not sure. Maybe. But let's say, of the people who were counted, that is in any of these steps. And I really, I really don't know that much about uh, these steps. I also noticed there are three stages, the qualifier ones, that we have almost no data for. I have a suspicion, I'm not sure about it, I have a suspicion that a lot of these are people that, that failed at the qualification step and that we only have data on qualification step for a very small number of tournaments. Uh, so what I'm actually going to do is say... Is I'd have to discuss this with someone that knew the data if we really wanted to get it right. But I'm going to say um, outcome is not equal to absent and not string detect uh, outcome qualify like this. That way I'll get rid of the qualifiers. It also, by the way, will help me get rid of the, um, the NAs because filter will remove the NAs. There, these are nine kind of reasonable steps. What else am I missing? Any other important ones? Oh, quarter. No, this isn't good. Yeah, these are the nine kind of important ones. Okay, so we can say, uh, all right. So here we are, and we have said Goran is in his tenth. Did um, outcome was third round. Okay. Hmm. How do you think about this next? Oh, well, I could think of I, one thing I can do is get it as um, as. Let's see. What are the top two um, levels? Fi I'm going to guess finalist and one. Ah, there's equal numbers of each, which suggests that we have one finalist, one winner. That's pretty handy. Can I predict the winner of those two? Not sure, but the, but one thing I can do is um, let's bring our uh, let's say this is our um, rolling. What do we call this? Timeline processed is what I would call this. Throw an ungroup. Why don't I? I can start by filtering for. Uh, hmm. Oh yeah, I can start by filtering for for. Uh, uh, really had it. Oh yes, outcome is either finalist or one. My hope is that there'll be an equal number of each. Yes, looks right. So. And let's uh, quickly arrange by tournament date. And now I can see, um, all right. Billie Jean Moffat King played Margaret Court in 1968. Uh, Billie King won. Uh, and um, both of them had played in only one previous um, competition. Uh, okay. I could include the rolling one count, couldn't I? 
Well, I, I only could. Let me see if they want this. Oh, I can include it here. And here's the way I'm going to do it. I'm going to do it with a cumulative sum. It's a really, it's a really uh, fun function. C rolling one count is cumulative sum. Oops, I'm going to. I'm still grouped by player. Of the outcome equals one. I'm not sure. This might have been the approach that. Um, Thomas took when, when he set up this, when he cleaned this data, I'm not going to look at the spoiler, um, but what we say is roll in one count, and why don't I say roll in finals count? Why not? Outcome in one and finalist. I could really break that down even a little bit more. I'm not going to right now, uh, but uh, we could have things like rolling um fourth round uh, count, so rolling semi-finals -final, count. Uh, all right, so we can tell then, for example, is, uh, yeah, this was, um, ah, I just realized if I'm rolling one count, I need to do it before this game. Uh, otherwise, of course, the person who has a rolling one count higher, that means they won this game. Uh, I, if I'm trying to use this to predict the outcome, is not going to work. What I'm going to need is um, is rolling. Yeah, I'm actually going to need to lag this. I'm going to say this one doesn't matter, but this one depends on the outcome. I need to lag. Did I say lag? Is it lead? I think it's la it's lag. And whenever I lag, I need to say um, default is zero. All right, so um, here we are. Billy Jean and Mar uh, Billy Jean, Billy King and Margaret Court. Uh, Billy had played had uh, um, was it Billy King? Yeah, had played once before. Had this was their first time playing. I'm actually gonna lag this one too. I'll do do the lag as measure. They never played before. They never won or been in a finals before. But Billy King by by Wimbledon had this was had already played twice. Had one, uh, in two previous tournaments, had won one, one of them and been a finalist in one of them. These two are going to be correlated, so it, it, so we can't necessarily use them both as predictors, but it's um, something I'm keeping track of. Okay, and um, let's see. Oh yeah, so I'm going to uh, so now I'm looking for all, across all these tournaments. Can I predict who won based on how many on? Oh, well, let's throw in their age. Uh, let me see, where did I add age in? Grand Slam's age. I can't use that code because it's only on the winners. I can use this code where I've taken the date of birth. I'm going to adapt this a little bit. Yeah, I don't want to include that other data. data. So I'm going to say DOB is this. And we rename it to player. And I'm going to, here I am, timeline process, throw in an inner, oh no, I don't have the finalists' um, dates, dates of birth. There's a reason I didn't do this earlier. Um, wish I had more tennis players' dates of birth. Should I do it? Nah, I'm not going to do it. Uh, I, I don't have a good way of, um, of, of, fi of finding them. I think that in this I only have ones who actually won a Grand Slam. Okay, so, so let's say I can't use, um, I can't use age in this data. Uh, in this model, it's okay. And now, if I oh, oh, so now what I can ask is, what's the probability someone wants a uh, one as a function of how many pr ones they'd previously won? That's a good way to do this. We group by rolling one count. I'm actually going to throw in a column. This is pretty handy. One is outcome equals one. Cool. And now I can say arrange by tournament date. Percentage one is mean of the one variable. All right. So the question is, when someone's a finalist, what's their probability of winning as a function of um, of uh, how many previous tournaments they've won? Let's also throw observ uh, observations is n. Really handy to have that in this data. And now we can say rolling one count. 
by percent one. I really need to add a little data. I need to add a limit here. So I just say boolean one count is going to be this. I need to cap it at let's say ten. Ten. We don't have a lot of observations. Boolean one count ten. Okay. What I learn is this. Someone who's never won before has a 37% chance of winning. Someone who's won a lot before, more like a 65% chance of winning. It's actually a little less dramatic than I was expecting. And it's pretty flat for like if you won once, twice, three, four times, five times before. It's less dramatic than I was expecting. There's some noise here, but it's something worth knowing. Okay, but that's actually not necessarily the right way to look at this. Because, here I am. Yeah, I, I'm going to leave that data, but I'm actually going to ask it differently. I'm going to say, let's take a look at, ignore the player, just include the year, tournament, outcome, oh, I forgot my filter, year, tournament, outcome, and um, we need year, tournament, gender to define the tournament. We have the outcome and the rolling one count, okay? And, uh, yep, each of these, what if I spread the outcome by the rolling one count? How do I get duplicate duplicates? Where am I finding a duplicate? If I count year, tournament, gender, sort equals true, why do I have, uh, in finalist one, I have eight people in this year? Oh, 1977 was a was a mess. I'm gonna go ahead and say, uh, can I just remove that whole one in the cleaning step? I think that I'm going to. I'm gonna say, filter not year equals 1977, and tournament equals Australian Open. It wasn't called tournament back then. Oh, I'm in the wrong. Data. Ah, I'm just going to do it here. Gonna leave it there. Going to put it here. Say uh, filter not here equals this. Ah, um, where was my spread? Oop. Ah, here's what I was looking for. Uh, between the finalists and the person who won. Um, so in this case, uh, for ex this is how many previous wins someone has. So for example, here, um, the person who was a finalist in the, in the 1968 U.S. Open had one, is this one? Yeah, had won two previous ones. The person who, who um, ended up winning uh, lost. Uh, and, um, I'm sorry, the person had, had none, pardon me. And uh, this would then, uh, um, we could ask the question, um, how does the uh, the di the directionality affect the um, as as in in terms of how much more s wins someone has than the other player? How does that affect the probability of winning? Because really, that's what this is: is we want to compare two people who get to the final stage. So, if I want to say I have a um, so what am I moving towards here? I'm trying to move towards a simple metric. I'm trying to move towards, you could probably call it the Robinson metric for Grand Slam uh, finals. Uh, it's going to be a pretty poor metric. There's a reason I'm not a, a sports analyst. But um, imagine I was determining the metric, and I, I've, uh, I suggest, what if it's uh, you take the number that, the, that one person has won, the, you subtract it from the number the other person has won, and that gives you the Robinson index. And then we use that to predict who's going to win. Uh, it's, and I ask, how successful has that historically been at predicting the winner? Well, I could start, if I said just whoever has more wins, I can actually uh, count that. I can say how often, I can say mutate result equal is, uh, sometimes I can do a case when, and say if one is greater than finalist, then, um, this is the I think the easiest way. One equals finalist then and we say finalist and we say otherwise if neither of those are true 
and I turn that into account. Why did I capitalize this? No real reason. Okay. This suggests that the person that um that this metric would be right. 202 times, uh, if I just said, look at who's won more um, previous competition, more, more previous Grand Slams. This metric would be right 52% of the time. It would be flatly wrong 32% of the time. 15% of the time, the two sides tie, uh, which in this case we could say we could say means we don't give a prediction. That's not an amazing record. It's better than chance, better than flipping a coin. But it's really a pretty poor record. I'm sure that um, go with something, some uh, other various other kinds of tennis rankings would get you a lot farther. Okay, so um, so but that was us evaluating one such metric. What if instead I used rolling finals count? You very similar outcome. Actually, eh, hard to say if it's better. You'd be right fifty five percent of the time, but you'd be wrong even more often. Like this, this would be saying. Um, how often does the winner have more pre has have been in the finals more often than the loser? All right, that's a few ways that we can um can try uh could try measuring it. It's not amazing. So, uh, let's uh but let's try another um definition of an index. The only definition of the index I'm going to try is imagine we had outcome a ranking of each of these. I have a suspicion. Yeah, that they go. This is basically if I did. I do not know what retired means. Um, I really don't know what retired means. Does that mean they quit? Um, I'm not sure. Oh, I should throw in a sort. Here we go. Quarterfinalist, semifinalist, finalist. Filter outcome. Oh, I'm, what I'm going to do is pull outcome. Imagine we had the, the the Robinson system goes like this: give a player one point for every time that they've previously been in a first round. That's just they've played. Two points if they're in a second round. Three points if they're in a third round, and so on for their previous um, uh, wins uh, for their previous uh, Grand Slam competitions. Check this function out. D put lets me take this vector and turn it into R so that it can say outcome rankings, where higher is better. I drop retired. I don't know. I actually don't know what that means. And it feels like quarterfinals, semifinals, finalist, one. These are your outcome rankings. Someone gets eight points for every one that they previously won. Only one point if they've been in the first, if they've played, but they stopped in the first round. You can imagine variations where lower ones have negative scores. I'm not going to go about that um, right now, but, but there are ways we could try fitting that. Okay. Now I've got my timeline. I actually can say... Um, Score is a uh, uh, score contribution. Is check this one out. Match your actually. I'm gonna quickly filter outcome in outcome rankings. Drop those retired ones out. Match outcome to outcome rankings. Here we go. So now I can actually say. Uh, here we go. This person got in the third round, they get three points. This person got in the, uh, Goran got, was a finalist, got seven points. Someone who had won would get eight points. Uh, and now we can keep a, um, a running score. So I can say, group by player, I did this earlier, but running score is cumulative sum of score contribution. People, um, sports analysts, they do this better than I do, but they're doing something somewhat similar. They're coming up with definitions that they, um, uh, definitions of like of systems of, of simple metrics that we can they can use to predict uh, winners and they're saying I don't forget to lag this default is zero alright so someone's score can only go up um, based on the number of, of grand of tournaments they've been in that might not be ideal uh, honestly uh, especially as they're a especially as when we take age into account Oh, well, unless I did, instead of running score, cumulative mean. Okay, I'm going to start by doing, let's say, this, this is still just me. I don't have any good evidence, but it's like, let's say, what's the your average performance in a previous um, Grand Slam? 
and we save your average performance. So, so by, by this point, um, Guran's average performance was 3.4. Let's um, ask, for, for example, what does uh, Serena Williams' uh, history look like by this metric? Wow. Okay, so Serena uh, has won so many of the of the ones that she played in that her average is 5.7. I think that's, that's like the on average a little below a semifinalist, which is really very good. Uh, okay, so then I can ask the question. Um, let's see. If I want to predict, I think I have a few ways. I think I have a few ways to do this. Uh, huh. So I can say what's What's probably someone wins based on what their score is going in? Okay, I'm going to start with all the competitors that, that hit any of these rounds. And this is based just on previous data because of that lag. What I'm going to say is tournament scores. I'm not going to quite do the same thing I did before with the spread. I think that was a little complicated. What I can say is look at, look at your scores and, um, and say... Group uh, and of, of all the how many people enter how many people are in every tournament based on this year outcome gender oops uh, on group oh uh, year gender is uh, year tournament gender is what I was looking for some have nine some have sixteen it's a little confusing I think it depends on how much missing data there is. Uh, then maybe I shouldn't do that. Maybe I'll just maybe I'll go back to what I was thinking before. Oh yeah, what I'll do is I'll say filter for. Eh, I'll do my spread approach again. I um uh, maybe I just made uh, it was a mistake to look at this differently. So for starters, group by um, for starters I can just say. Oh, actually, I should have done this before before I do any filtering. What I say is this. For every possible outcome, what is the average score? Tournament scores. Average score is mean of running score. This suggests there is predictive power. Um, look at this. The average person who, who loses in one of the first rounds has a relative, means that they've often lost before. Uh, whereas the average, and I'm going to quickly... Yeah. Whereas the average person who wins has a 4.7 on average, they've done pretty well. Uh, this shouldn't be surprising, but it's um, I'm sure I did a lag, right? Yeah, this shouldn't be surprising, but it, but it's definitely meaningful. It's saying you can use the past to predict uh, the the present. Uh, so we can say in a given match. Um, now we don't actually have matches, but we have their outcomes. But we, we do have the match of the finalist and the um, I can say filter. This suggests it's not going to be that meaningful for a finalist. Ah, okay. That actually is interesting. It says like the average person who in the finals isn't that much better. Maybe I, let me not look at the finalists. Let me ask it differently. If someone enters a tournament, what's the probability they'll win as a function of their previous score? I'm going to call it previous average. That's what I'm going to call it. Instead of running score, which sounds confusing, sounds like it has to do with how fast they run. Uh, what I'm going to say is their previous average. And what I'm going to say is, um, of people who enter a tournament, where am I? Remembering what it is. Uh, yeah, I want to group by their score. Okay, there are a few ways to to, to shape this data, That's why, and I don't have the clearest way in my head quite yet, but this is what I'm coming up with. What I'm saying is score group is cut your previous average by zero to, can't go any higher than eight. This is going to have a problem with um, include with NAs. I actually need to throw. Cut is useful for this. Include lowest is true. That's what I was looking for. Um, all right. And then I'd say, in each of these score groups, what is the probability of winning a tournament that they enter? 
So I could actually say summarize observations is n, probability win, win the entire tournament, not just the current match. Mean of one. Oh, one. So this is suggesting that of the people that enter a tournament that have us that, that on average have been somewhere between the finalists and the they like have a very high stage, the probability of winning is um is very is, is one out of three just as soon as they enter the tournament. This this is um uh, this would be someone really on a on a very large winning streak, I suppose. Uh, there's a um there's some probably want to bin this a little more crudely. Yeah, but there's some there's some meaning in, in some of these steps. Uh, the the this is so this is cool. It would be nice to just say how the Robinson I could probably call this uh, what would I say I would say how the Robinson score index. I've maybe people use this score for all, I have no idea if I invented it, but I definitely haven't heard about it before. I use a score like this. Um, Maybe people use a score like this, but I certainly haven't heard of it. Bin. I could say labs. Bin of their. Bin of a player's average previous performance. Probability of winning tournament. Title, how past performance in Grand Slams predicts future success. Uh, that, that's a bit of a stretch. Does this predict future success? Where, um, where first round equals one, where first, oh, let's close it. Round equals one, second round equals two, Dot, 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 one equals eight. Final equals seven, one equals eight. Player, bin of a player's, bin of a player's. Player's average previous performance. And let's tidy this up a little bit more. Y continuous labels equals percent format. I haven't load scale, loaded scales yet. Okay, so this is the, the, metric that we came up with, uh, where we looked at someone's previous performance. Where did I do that? I looked here. Let me clean this, this, this code up a little. Okay. That's pretty handy. All right. So this is showing, does past performance predict future success? Where the first round is one, the second round is two, etc. In general, the chance of winning a tournament should, should be I don't know if there are 16 uh, competitors, be one out of 16. We see if, if someone on average has lo has stopped in the first four rounds, they've never, this is where you hit the, um, oh, this is how, this is how I would do it. Oh, okay. I've got, I've got an idea for this. Um, I suppose here's how we can make it a little more meaningful. We've got our outcome rankings. We round them. Round or ceiling? Hmm. Round, because zero would mean, z the problem is uh, zero is, uh, oh, zero isn't meaningful. That, that's sort of the challenge that I have. Uh, seven to eight. Okay, I'm going to actually, yeah, I'm just quickly going to this. I need to say, I really want this to, like, say, to have your, um, your outcome rankings along it. That would be uh, really useful. What I'm going to say is, let's make the default one. Can't go any lower than one because you can't stop any lower than first stop and any lower than first round. Um, and we'll say um, we can still do previous ag average is this, and I can say previous performance is. Round of so outcome rankings, round of previous average. Do any of these end up being performances round uh, outcome rank? Oh, uh, group by previous performance. 
Ah, that looks that looks pretty good. Okay, previous performance. Treating and now we can just say treating round as linear treating rounds as if treating rounds as if they can be averaged linearly. And I quickly need to previous performance is FCT re-level of previous performance by your outcome rankings. Aha. One last tidy up. Maybe last. I uh, should never promise that. Um, theme axis text X. I didn't think of this until I realized that I wanted um, let me get let me finish it and let me explain what, what made me think of this kind of graph. Okay. So, pro this is someone's average previous performance. This is whether they won the tournament. Absolutely confirm I did do a lag of this, so yeah. Okay. Um, all right. Uh, and this is, so this is, uh, and this is including people that are first times, treating them as if they're in their, their first round. Okay. And uh, this is the, the kind of person who is on average has won a previous tournament, has a very good chance of winning. There's a clear difference between people who stop in the fourth round and people who go on to quarterfinals, semifinals, and so on. What made me think of this um, uh, of this kind of visualization is that I realized I had these numbers, 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, and I wanted to explain in the text or, or verbally, I wanted to explain what each corresponded to. But then I realized I might as well just put them on the axes, and then I should define this as someone's previous, um, average previous performance. So in a sense, by treating these as um, as ordered, I was able to um, uh, yeah, I was I, I, I was able to, to create this I think somewhat more intuitive visualization. There are problems with this visualization. The biggest one is not all tournaments have the same number of people. We saw that for a, for a moment, partly because of missing data. So it's hard to say um, the probability of winning if some might have more observations than others. Uh, and it also, but this does communicate a lot. It communicates the idea that the chance of being a finalist versus winning is not hugely different. So this might not be a great way to predict the final winner, but it's definitely a way that going into a tournament, you could say this is where I think they'll they'll end up. Nothing shocking here. It's not like someone wouldn't do if they were very familiar with tennis, but it's cool that we were able to create a quantitative metric and then evaluate it in this way to, in the direction of predicting who would win Grand Slam tournaments. All right. That was really fun. Um, I always have uh, an interesting time on analyses like sports analyses where I don't know a lot about um, about uh, the data go uh, data going in, and I'll see you next week.